By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Often Troll Cup, the fifth edition. And we've reached round number five. And in round number five, we have two duchies playing against each other. Alex versus Martin. Alex is on red, white, a little bit of blue for a pink weenie deck. I've called it pink weenie plus because of that blue edition. And he's taking on Itwin Valley, a deck piloted by Martin. And I mean, it's got beautiful Itwin of Freets. It's got Diamond Valleys. It's a very cool brew, but before I go into the decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, by the way. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to go to the games first, check out the deck text later. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so if you click on there, It'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you will also find the link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you want to support the channel, if you like what I do, please consider becoming a patron via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And you can already be uh, become a supporter of the show for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, your name will be mentioned at the end uh, of every video in the end scroll. So it's pretty cool. Check it out if you've got a moment. Patreon.com slash uh, Timmy Talks. Okay, so now that you're fully informed, I am going to continue with the deck deck section of this video. I'm going to start with the deck of Alex, Pink Weenie Plus. And here we see the deck by Alex. So I've called it Pink Weenie Plus because it's red, it's uh, white, and it has some blue cards. That's the plus in it. You know, of course, the blue power cards, but also a full playset of Psionic Blasts. And as you can see, Alex is a quite a big fan of altered cards. I believe. All the cards here are altered by the artists themselves but please alex if i'm wrong feel free to correct me in the comments below you know you know your collection of course a lot better than i do uh, but i know that you love altars and you love signatures so he's always hunting for rare signatures and yeah this is a beautiful deck you know just to look at it um but yeah pink weenie so what does it want to do it's mainly white and red and it's one of it wants to play out creature threats really early in the game so we see a playset of savannah lines and a playset of iron claw orcs so you want to deploy them like turn one turn two turn them sideways deal a little bit of damage with them and basically do the rest with all your direct damage i mean look at the amount of direct damage in this deck you've got four bolts four chains and four psionic blasts so and and most of those you want to like point to your opponent you don't want to point it to the creatures of course depending on the situation but in the ideal scenario this is really a sprint deck meaning you want to win as quickly as possible turn your creature sideways all that direct damage to the dome as they say so to the life total of your opponent and just get him to zero as quickly as you can um, one of the things that's quite interesting about this build is that he's not playing with swords to plowshares and i understand why because swords to plowshares is kind of counterproductive in this deck right you're giving your opponent life and you don't want to do that when you're sprinting you know you only want to hurt and i think uh, what he's done here is he's taken out the swords and he's replaced them by the psionic blasts now psionic blast is only one blue and two to cast so kind of easy to splash and it can deal four damage at instant speed so it can take care of that annoying sarah angel of your opponent but at the same time it's also great to just uh, play of course on the uh, as direct damage on the life total of your opponent instead and uh, the white of course is still present in this deck in the form of the savannah lines that i mentioned earlier but also in the form of disenchant and disenchant i mean i think it's the best common in old school maybe maybe lightning bolt but in my my humble opinion, let me know if you agree or disagree, uh, it's Disenchant. Disenchant, one white and one, and it can destroy an enchantment or an artifact at instant speed. It's just, it's such a good card. It's It, it should have been at least uncommon, maybe even rare. But okay, uh, Disenchant, super good. We see it in this deck. And also in this specific build, I think Balance can be, it can be a really good card because this is one of those decks where you can just empty your hand really quickly with all those cheap direct damage spells. And then you've got nothing left in your hand. And then if you draw into that balance, it, it can be a great mind twist. It can be a Wrath of God at the same time, right? Take care of all the creatures of your opponent. So a one-sided Wrath, I guess. And I mean, it could just be really good in this deck because, you know, you're, you're playing out a lot of spells. You're not really com committing to the board. So that makes balance uh, a quite good. And then, of course, we do see 
the, the usual suspects here. We see um, the Demonic Tutor and the Mind Twist, and of course, all those restricted cards. And then, by the way, he is playing with some counter magic. There's one Mana Drain in there. It's altered, it's hard to see. And there's one Swords to Plowshares in there. So he is playing with the Swords, actually. Now that I now, now I see it there <laughs> in the corner. Anyway, uh, it looks like a very good and very aggressive deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Martin. And here we see the deck of Martin. So I've called it Itwin Valley because he's playing with Itwin Afrit, a card you don't see often, and he's playing with three Diamond Valleys. Again, a lot of people that play with Diamond Valleys play kind of the preacher game that I'm going to steal your creatures and I'm going to sack them to the Valley game. We don't see that at all in this deck. So that's why the, those cards really stood out to me because you just don't see them often. And I like the synergy between Itwin Afrit and Diamond Valley. So Diamond Valley, maybe that's a good card to start with. It's a land from Arabian Nights. You can tap it to sack target creature, gain life equal uh, to the toughness of the creature. Now Itwin Afrit is three red to cast, a card from Arabian Nights, a three, six creature that um, uh, when you want to block with it, you got to flip a coin. If you miss the flip, it doesn't block. That's kind of in short what it does, but you can attack with it. So it's actually a really good card because you get nine points in total for three mana, right? That's kind of insane. A three, six for three. When you think about it, those stats are nuts. The downside of this card is not really a downside because you're not going to block. I guess the biggest downside, and that's why you don't see it often, is the three red in the casting cost, right? So you really got to commit to red. But I think one of the things that I've learned from Martin and looking at this deck is that you can commit to a color, you can go very deep into it, and at the same time, you can splash so many other colors because the key cards in those colors, the power cards, the restricted cards, they only have one color in their casting cost, right? We've got Demonic Tutor, one black and one. We've got Balance, one white and one. We've got the blue power, Ancestral Recall, one blue. Time Walk, one blue and one. A time Twister, one blue and two. So you can commit deeply into one color and still, because of the duels, because of the City of Brasses, be able to cast all those other cards as well. And that's what we're really seeing in this deck. And there are some really cool cards in here. There are some red cards in here that I would love to play more often myself. Uh, we've got Inferno, right? Inferno, seven mana to cast, two red and five for an instant from the dark that deals six damage to every creature and every player. It's kind of the Wrath of God of uh, of red and in a way it's better because it also deals damage which is basically what you want to do when you're a red mage um it's 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 really nice and it's instant speed and that that makes it so good the fact that it's instant speed that was quite interesting about the dark because the dark gate gave us more instant speed uh, red spells in the form of uh, fisher so we also see fisher here two red and three um instant speed destroy target land or target creature in a way, you could say that Fisher is the answer to Disenchant, right? But it's a lot more expensive to cast, and, and thus it's a lot less popular than Disenchant. But when you think of it, the two modes are really good. Destroy land, destroy a creature. It's just the casting cost that's kind of steep. But the fact that it's instant speed, I, I really like this card. You know, I, I've i played with it in the past, but I thought five was too much, especially combined with your average red strategy. But maybe I should give it another chance. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it works. As a one-off, I really like it because it's such a surprising card. And then we see a card that I'm happy that he's not playing one-off. He's playing three of those, three forks. I think fork, super cool. Interrupt for two red. Uh, remember, we're, we are playing according to modern rules, so it's basically an instant here. Um, and you can copy an instant or a sorcery spell. I think this is really good in old school because there, there are so many powerful restricted cards. Most of them are sorceries or instants. And you can copy all of them. Are you going to Demonic Tutor? Oh, I'm also going to Demonic Tutor. You know, I'm also going to look up a card. Are you going to Regrowth? I'm going to Regrowth. Or even better, are you going to Ancestral Recall? I'm going to Ancestral Recall. Fork Counterspell, Counter to Counterspell. I mean, Fork is just a really cool cool card. Or even better, Counter to Mana Drain by Fork in the Mana Drain. That's even better. Um, so yeah, Fork, a card that I think you don't see often. But it can be really, really good. I have to admit, though, the, the times that I have played it, I own one unlimited copy. Um, it, it didn't really work out for me. But I, I probably just need to play it more often, practice more with it. But it's one of those cards, when I have it in hand, it's usually not very useful. Uh, but that's probably just me. So, Martin, I'm looking forward that you're going to show the true power of Fork in, uh, in today's episode. Who knows? Um, and then when we're looking at the rest of the creatures, by the way, because I haven't really discussed those, we see two beautiful Sheev and Dragons. I love that. And we also see three Atogs. And I think the Atog goes really well with all those artifact mana in this deck. If you're wondering, by the way, the cards in between the Black Lotus and the Soul Ring, those are two uh, Flower Stones. And Flower Stone is another one of those cards that's really good in... Um, 
that, that's really good in um, in old school magic because City of Brass is such a popular card. So if your opponent has a City of Brass, you can make every color of mana with your Velour Stone, meaning you can cast all those restricted spells that you need the other color color of mana for. So it's it's really I uh, ideal, right? It's super cool. Um, anyway, this is the deck of Martin. I can just I can keep talking about this deck, but I'm just too eager to go to the match. Let's go to round number five, Alex versus Martin. Here we go. Game number one here is about to start. So on the left, we have Martin playing his uh, Itwin Afrit Diamond Valley deck. On the right, we have Alex playing his Pink Weenie deck. Let's see who's on the play here. We see a fork there in hand for Martin. I also believe I saw Black Lotus there in hand for Alex. So I'm uh, wondering if we're going to see some explosive starts here. Look at that. Alex taking the mulligan though. So I guess the Black Lotus wasn't enough. Shuffling up again. And I wonder who's on the play. We're about to find out. Martin, of course, uh, having that Itwin deck, Itwin Afrit, playing three of those main, so three six creature from Arabian Nights. Really looking forward to see that card in action. And Alex playing his pink weenie deck with, of course, the blue power splash. He's playing a lot of direct damage. I think Alex is really uh, going to be the aggressor in this match. But we'll just have to uh, to wait and see. There we go. No cut here from Martin again. Both players know each other quite well. It's really nice to be part of the uh, the old school family. The Dutch players, most of them know each other. We see each other a lot at tournaments. It's a very uh, friendly atmosphere. There is a card going to the bottom. Martin there uh, picking up his hand again as well. And so this is round number five here of the Ufton Troll Cup. Almost a hundred players playing in this event, the biggest old school event in the Netherlands. And we have a very international scene at this event as well. Alex there putting a card on the bottom. And he's on the play it seems. Starting with a Volcanic Island Chain Lightning. There he goes. Starting with the direct damage straight away. And there is a Soul Ring and a pass. And we're going to see a lot of altars, by the way, in today's match. Martin's deck uh, has tons of altars. He likes to alter cards himself as well. Also a fan of um, very unique pieces of magic. And then, of course, we have Alex who uh, collects signatures and also altered cards. There we see a time walk after that disenchant. And that's bad news, I think, for Alex because this is a quite a good tempo play. There's a Diamond Valley. And there is a Felwer Stone. And that Felwer, of course, altered as well. So, I mean, despite the fact that Alex took care of the Soul Ring, we still see Martin uh, ramping up here. Here we see an Iron Claw Orc being played out by Alex, signed by Anson Maddox. And what's he gonna do? There's an Atog being played out by Martin. Has, of course, that Felwerstone to feed to it. So I wonder if Alex is going to attack. Perhaps he's thinking about firing off a Lightning Bolt on end step on the Atok, and then Martin will have to choose if he wants to sack the Felwer to keep the Atok around. Alex, you draw a card for turn. Now remember, he is playing with four Chain Lightnings, four Lightning Bolts, and four Psionic Blasts. So, I mean, he can... He can take care of this Atog. The question is, does he want to? Another consideration for him could be just attacking exactly with the Iron Claw and see if Martin wants to trade his Felwer Stone for it. Nope, taking the damage, which I think is quite good if you're Alex. When you look at Alex's list, he's probably just focused on that life total. I mean, he's still on 20. Life's a resource. He doesn't care about that Atog that much. Problem, of course, for him is that he did take a mulligan and he was on the play, so perhaps he's getting light on cards. Ideally, he wants to find an Ancestral Recall or a Time Twister or Wheel of Fortune to kind of draw into a new hand. And there is that bolt, though. Sacking it to the Diamond Valley, though. And that's, I mean, that Diamond Valley actually is bad news for Alex. That could be a game changer here in this match. Another Iron Claw Orc, by the way, by Alex, and a pass turn. Let's see what Martin can do. Went back up to 15 after the sack, just passing the turn. This is really good news 
For Alex, it looks like Martin is stuck on mana. So the disenchant earlier on the Sol Ring was a very good move. And remember, he needs three red to cast those it wins. Currently only has two red available. There's the attack for four. Is Martin going to animate the factory, you know, and then it's a pretty big risk because then if you lose the factory, you go down another land and you're already quite light on mana. Exactly taking the damage, you're dropping to 11. There's another factory tapping four very quickly. What are we going to see? Dragon Well, perhaps? There's a Dragon Well 2 3 flyer, and you can pump it for one red, give it plus one plus oh. And that 2 3 is a little bit annoying, so we do see. A bolt, and I mean, this is so great about Martin's deck. Every time that Alex tries to take care of one of the creatures, he just sacks it to the, Martin sacks it to the Diamond Valley and goes up in life. So even though Alex keeps attacking, Martin is still on the relatively high life total. Now he's got three red. Are we going to see an it win hitting the board? There's the it win of Freed. Oh, man. And I, I think this kind of seals the deal because of that combination with Diamond Valley. I mean, he can sack the it win at any time go back up to 13 and of course you know it's it's well i wanted to say it's a great blocker but actually it's not because you got to flip the coin but he can try to block with it though i think alex is now asking how does the card work again i mean you don't see the card that often looking at his hand what to do what to do I mean, it would be nice to see him attack and kind of see him flip the coin. So Alex really in the tank here. I think this is such a tough situation for him, right? One of the things he could do if he has a psionic blast in hand is attack. Then if the Itwin manages to block, you know, the Iron Claw. Okay, so he's got a Chaos Orb. Of course, you're going to an Orb on the Idwin, I guess. So it's going to activate the Chaos Orb. The way the Chaos Orb works is that you don't know the target. So if you want to do something, you have to do it before he flips. And now, of course, Alice can pick another target. So I would now go for the Diamond Valley. Beautiful altar, by the way. And we see Martin going up for six, right? Because he just uh, sacked the Idwin of Freed to the Diamond Valley. So he's going up to 13. And Alex is really in the tank here, perhaps considering flipping on the Plateau instead, which would also be a consideration. If you take away that third mana, then you're sure that there's not a new Itwin popping up next turn. So, and he is going for the Diamond Valley, though. There's the flip, there's the hit. Diamond Valley gone. Passing the turn, so... Doesn't want to attack with the Iron Claw Orcs because of the Mishra's factories on the side of Martin. I mean, this is pretty tough, right? There's a balance. Oh, man. Going to lose it to Iron Claw Orcs. And he only has one card in hand, so Martin is going to lose two cards. Wonder what he has in there. A Fork and an Inferno. So Fork, Inferno gone. Inferno not really good in this matchup because you're also dealing six damage to yourself. But I still feel Martin is kind of ahead here on this board. There's a demonic tutor or no, it's a mind twist. Often troll altar. Oi, oi, oi. Very thematic to play it here at the Often Troll Cup. There's the attack, swinging in for two. Making it three. So Alex gonna drop to 15. And the problem here for Alex is that high life total of Martin thanks to that uh, Diamond Valley, of course. There's a bolt on the Savannah Lines. Both players kind of in top decking mode here. Quite an exciting uh, first game, I have to say. There's the attack. Going down to 13. There's a Chaos Orb. Underground Seed Pass, I mean... He really needs a draw seven, Alex. But then again, if you play a draw seven, you're also giving seven cards to Martin. There's the attack for two. Alex dropping to 11. There's an ATOC. And a pass. There's a factory and a pass. So it's, uh, it's looking quite good here for Martin. He can just attack again with the factory. Also add an ATOC, why not? He is going to flip. 
Ooh, I didn't expect this flip. I thought maybe he would just attack first. See what happens. He can always flip in response to, uh, to a block. But he's not going to wait for it. Like, full aggression here. Animating. And he's going to swing in. He can pump it again so he can deal four points of damage. He's going to drop to seven. Ooh, it's looking very bad for Alex. Maybe he's got one more turn after this one. Wow, just a pass. Perhaps he's got a bolt in hand and he can bolt or a psionic blast, but that would still deal him two points of damage. This emerald is quite good because he can feed it to the Atok. Is it already over? That's the question. There's the attack. Nothing he can do. Pump it up to three. Now he's going to sack or not. He's going to go to three. Is he going to sack some artifacts? No, being very patient here. That's it, three lands in hand, and that's game number one for Martin. I, I really think that Diamond Valley is a big problem for Alex, so maybe he's got some answers to that in the sideboards. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards right now, and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here is about to begin. Let's see if both players keep their hands. Alex, of course, being on the play, the player on the right, after losing that first game, and... I checked this sideboard and I think the bad news here for Alex is he doesn't really have any land removal in his main board or his sideboard. He only has Strip Mine and Chaos Orb to deal with those Diamond Valleys, so that's going to make it quite tough. This is a pretty good opening for him though. He's playing Savannah Lines here and a Mox Ruby passing the turn. There we see a Plateau. Mox Sapphire and a Bolt. Bolt the line quickly. Again, Lightning Bolt, a really good card against the creatures of Alex, playing with Savannah Lines and Iron Claw Orcs, and of course the Mishra's Factory, so you can all kill them with a single Lightning Bolt. Just a Factory and a pass. There's a Strip Mine. And I mean, Alex unable here to put any pressure on, like he can animate the Factory, but then probably Martin's gonna strip or just take the two. I mean, he's still on 20. Needs to put some threats on the board, so he is animating and attacking. Are we going to see another bolt? That would be pretty disastrous here. Nope, at least he's going to take some damage. Going to drop to 17. And Alex passing the turn here. So at least he's got some factory, uh, you know, damage getting in. Some pressure. But, oh, look at that. Already a Diamond Valley on the board. Again, some mana problems, it seems, for Martin. But, I mean, he's got time still. If I would be Alex, I would, of course, I don't know his hand, but I would consider playing super aggressive and just animating both here. Exactly, go in there. I mean, your deck's aggro, right? Play towards your outs. Tapping three. Oh, look at this. This is majestic. Oh, man, taking over control here of the factory, blocking the factory, bumping it, then sacking it. What a play. Ho, ho, ho. Martin really showing off here. And look at Alex. Giving a high five. This is insane. Oh, man. This is just nuts. This is You don't see this often. A card coming in from the sideboard. And now he's playing a Suchi. Another card, I believe, that's in his sideboard. And uh, it makes sense that he boarded that in because it's harder to uh, to get rid of with that four toughness for Alex than, for example, the Dragon Whel Whelp, which has a three toughness. So it makes sense to play Suchi over Dragon Whelp in this matchup. And I mean, it, it feels like Alex already lost here, to be honest. We do see a strip here on the uh, Diamond Valley. At least that's something. But this is such a blow here for Alex. And I'm really happy we, we, we caught this play on camera. I mean, uh, very, very exciting play by Martin. What can Alex do, really? I mean, I hope he's going to come back because I would love to see a third game between these decks. There we see a Psionic Blast taking care of the Suchi. So Alex kind of in defense mode here with his aggressive deck. He's dropping to 18. There we see another Volcanic Island. Tapping two. There's the Atok passing the turn. Atok pretty harmless at the moment, but still it's some pressure. I believe Alex has four cards in hand at the moment. Only two cards in hand for Martin. Tapping a white. Okay, there's a Swords to Plowshares on the Atok. And there's a Time Walk. Okay, so at least it's something. Would be nice for him if you could find an Iron Claw Orc or 
Ancestral Recall, maybe? <laughs> that would be even better than Iron Claw Orc, obviously. <laughs> Here we see a Mox Pearl being played out by Martin. I believe both of these Moxen are altered by Dan Frazier. Putting his signature dragon here on the uh, on the Moxen. There's a strip. Tapping five. What are we going to see for five? Ooh, there's a Fisher. The one-off card in the deck. Card from the dark. Here a pass turn by Alex. Tapping four. Okay, there's a Dragon Whelp. So I guess Dragon Whelp is still in the deck for a moment. I thought maybe he traded out the Whelps for the Suchis. And look at that lonely Mox Ruby here. There's a Felwer Stone. It's looking so bad for Alex here. I mean, pumping it up to five, of course, with those mountains. Alex dropping here to 13, passing the turn, not doing anything, not finding any lands. It looks like he's toast here in game number two. It's going so quick. There's another pass. Ay, 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 another attack here, dropping to three. This is tough. Finding a Tundra, finally. Does he have, I mean, a balance, right? That's the first thing that I think about. Would take care of two lands, at least, on the side of Martin. First things first, maybe just the Swords on the Whelp. You gotta take care of the Dragon Whelp, or else you're toast. Going through his hand. Is that card on the right there? Is that a Swords to Plowshares? Bolt would be good enough. Chain would be good enough. He's got enough answers for this whelp in his deck. But the question is, does he have it in his hand? There's a pretty big difference between those two factors. He's on three. But I'm optimistic because the fact that he's taking his time means that he has an out. Or else he would say, you got this. Trying to mold the perfect couple of turns to get out of this hellhole and to try to make it into an actual game. I'm sure he also boarded in the blue elemental blasts. Okay, there's the swords to plowshares. So Martin here going up. But that doesn't matter at the moment. There you see him, fingers crossed. He knows he's on three. No bolt, no bolt, no bolt. There's a bad lance. Tapping six. What are we gonna see for six? There's a trike, end of the road here, right? That's it. Wanting to show his hand already, that's it, yep. Wow, 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 wow. This was a really, really quick game and the balance wouldn't have helped much. I think, um, you know, he did what he could, Alex, but he just got totally overclassed here. And I, I think that the factory play, obviously, that was the moment that the tables really, really turned and Martin could really get a pretty easy victory here in game number two. That means it's 2-0. Congratulations, Martin, for winning round number five. And now let's see what's in store for us for round number six. In round number six, we have a very special Magic player that's gonna, gonna join us here and is gonna show his skills on Timmy Talks. I'm super excited about this. We have Ole Rade. He is a Hall of Famer. He won the Pro Tour of Columbus with a spider deck when he was 16. I mean, here you can see a picture of him at 16. It is insane. I'm so happy to have you on the channel, Ola. Uh, we've met before at some events and uh, I mean, he's he's a great guy and an awesome magic player. And he's going to take on Frenchman uh, Sebastian with his counter burn deck. So I think next week, Ola Rade, by the way, is playing gr uh, Green Stompy. I'm just looking forward to seeing him play. Maybe you're wondering, if you look at his sideboard, why are there two sharks in his sideboard? That's because he's the former winner of NoobCon. And when you win NoobCon, which is basically the world championships of old school, you get a giant shark signed by all participants. So he's got two of those. So he's won the event twice. I mean, Oladada, what a player, you know. It's it's amazing to have him on the channel. So he's taking on the counter burn deck by Sebastian. So really looking forward to show you that match. But that's uh, for the next episode. If you don't want to miss that, by the way, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you for doing that. And if you're already a sub, thank you so much for uh, for subbing and watching the videos here on Timmy Talks. Please let me know if you enjoyed the videos thus far by leaving a comment, leaving a like and sharing this on your socials. All these things really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also consider becoming a patron of the show via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. That way you can support the show financially and that already starts for just $1. And for that $1, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned at the end of uh, every video in the end scroll. What end scroll? 
this end scroll. Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.